So welcome back to module line, which is a table node. And of course you have already seen what Google sheets does and you kind of got a brief overview of what a table node is. It's of course used for databases, but for much more complex and advanced automations. And from my personal experience, trust me, I love the a table node. I just show you exactly why. So let's start off by adding the a table node searching about it. And yeah, you'd search a table. You'd see it here. And for the people who don't know what Airtable is, let me show you. So this is Airtable. So Airtable is basically from idea to an app in an instant. What they mean really is you can create databases, CRMs and full fledged apps out of this as well. And how you'd be able to do that is of course, now I wouldn't be diving into typically what Airtable is and how you're going to use that for that. I would recommend this video from Julian post Airtable 2024 full course beginners. Uh, it's amazing. It dives into the basics and then of course I dive into the complex side of the things. I would of course attach that the link of this particular video in the description. So how we are going to use Airtable in Airtable is what we are mainly talking about. Firstly, let me show you how does a database in Airtable looks like. So I clicked on the start button. So in Airtable, the names of these things are very different, right? In Google Sheets, we call it like row and column. So the very first thing is this, these are called as tables. So the moment that we click here, plus uh, what we can do is we can insert any sort of base, any sort of blank table from this, right? So Google Sheets, Calendar, Excel, Smart Salesforce, Smartsheet, all of these 25 sources, these are called as tables. So here the columns are called as fields and the rows are called as records, which contains the data itself. Believe me, that's all that you need to know in order to make this function on your table. So the very first thing is you will only see one trigger, which is on new Airtable event. I'd show you how this works in order to create this Airtable node or Airtable trigger. The very first thing, which of course we'll need to do is connect the credentials. So how are we going to connect our credentials is of course we'd click on this drop down, click on create new credentials. And we have three options here, API access token and OAuth. Let's set it up using access token. What we need to do in order to connect it there is we'd come back to our Airtable. Here you'd find your own account, click on this and click on Builder Hub. In Builder Hub, you'd find this personal access tokens. You go there, you simply create a token and I do it as an 10 demo token. That's it. Add a scope to it. Let's add all the possible scopes, which uh, it might need. And then uh, we'll add all the resources and simply click on create token. That's it. Copy this token. Please do not show it to anybody else. Uh, please don't copy my token. I would of course delete this after the video and yeah, just copy this, come back to our N10 workflow, paste the access token here, click on save and yeah, there you go. Credentials connected successfully. So that's it. We have connected our Airtable account. Now, of course, this Airtable trigger runs upon these different modes, which is minutes, hours, days, weeks, custom, right? When you do custom, you would of course set up a cron expression there, but that's really not necessary that much of the times, right? Uh, you can keep it minutes. That's more than enough base URL. Now let's start off uh, building this. How I do it particularly is I go to ID and I come back to the table here in my table in the URL, I'll find this particular section, which is after the slash of uh, airtable.com, this is the ID of the base. So we'd paste it here. And then of course, for the table of, as well, what we'll do is we'll find something which starts with this TBLE right in the URL. We take this, we would copy this, we come back, we'll paste it here. So in order to add this trigger field, what we need to do is we need to add a trigger field or a created time field in our Airtable database. So we'd come here. I'll scroll to the last, we'll click on this add field. We'll search created time and yeah, we'll click on this. We'd keep this as created time, copy this, take this live, create the field and that's it. You have it here and that's where you'll put this created time. And now you would be able to see this fetch test events. So now we can fetch test events and yeah, for testing purposes, let's fetch something out of the sheet. So it has given us one event in order to create our entire workflow. Now, of course, this wouldn't be the case. You wouldn't only get one event since it's just a trigger, right? So it has given us any random record uh, in order to just generate a schema with which we can create the entire workflow forward. So this was Airtable trigger. So next, what we need to know is the Airtable node actions, those base actions, record actions, and every particular action that we do have there. So when it comes to base actions, now you know what bases is. So if you want to fetch out many bases, 
that's the best way to do it you want to fetch out base schema that's the best way to do it schema is of course the backend metadata of that so if you want to create a record which is like appending a sheet in google sheet you can use this button a create or update same as append or update uh, delete a record you already know what that is get a record you want to get a particular record which is one record id okay and you want to search records this is the alternative for get rows action which we were doing in the google sheets note and update record is of course you are updating one particular record so there are two important things that you need to know about airtable one is this id okay so every time you are kind of appending a row in google sheets you will have to put in a column which on which you are matching it but here it's airtable you already have one particular reference id for every record that is being created so each of these record have their own ids which we only get here in anytime hence why of course the content of those records starts from this particular schema which is fields so whenever we want to match something we already have the id that's the best way to go about it we don't particularly need to put in names or uh, you know roles or any such matching column that's one thing so second thing is how you are gonna get those rows which you want to get which is gonna be the search record button okay so from the base what i want to choose is project control and from table what you want to do is so see, I really don't know how to code, don't care how to code, right? But the thing is, I need to get this particular formula. Now, how will I get this? I don't know what particular code is going to come here. Of course, I know, but I am talking from your perspective as to what we can put in here. So we'll simply take a screenshot of this. We'll go to chat GPT. And here in chat GPT, we'll paste that screenshot and we'd simply start talking to chat GPT. Hey ChatGPT, I want to get the filter by formula. What should I fill in that column? If I want to filter out all the people who have completed some tasks and for that, the schema of that particular input is total tasks assigned. So please tell me the formula that I should put here. This is an Airtable node. That's it. That's really how you prompt ChatGPT, believe me. And we click the send button. Rest, ChatGPT would take care of. So we got this answer and let's copy it and I, I just tell you basically this is and basically what kind of prompt that you're using that this also should be true and that also should be true right uh, it's more like the logical gate operation and this is the field name that is how you put in the field name there and greater than sign is of course a comparison sign and any number that you want to put in is zero so one thing that we'll of course take care of is just making sure that these field names are the same in the table as well so we'll simply come back node and we'd see come here we'd say total tasks signed and completed tasks okay so it's not total task completed it's completed tasks. so we'll simply paste that and here we'll update this to completed tasks that's it let's execute this and let's see what output do we get we got four items perfect basically these were the only four items or the four records which got assigned one task and they have completed one task as well you get the schema of all of this and now here you will be able to see that all the people the id of all the people there qa specialist name carlos gomez jordan lee you will see that all these records all the information of these records are here that's how search record works so this is how you use the search records uh, action in airtable node so this was it about all the actions that you can use from airtable now let's go back to our ppt what are some places, some use cases where you can use Airtable? Uh, you can create records with rich fields. You can store complex data with attachments, links, formatted text, date and times, tons and tons of stuff. Uh, filter and retrieve data very easily or query in the Airtable base with powerful filters uh, to extract exactly what you need. You just saw how you can do that. It's simply you take that, you go to chat GPT, ask it the question. It will give you the exact query. You don't need to know how to code that. Build lightweight CRMs, perfect for customer management, inventory tracking and project databases. Uh, because if you have seen that beginner's tutorial video, if you have not, please go see that. In that video, you would see how you can convert this database into a proper CRM, which is more like an app, uh, which you can interact, your team can interact with. And yeah, that's it about module line. In my personal experience, I would recommend using Airtable node over Google Sheets any time of the day. It has much more features. It helps us in building more scalable systems and scalable operations, scalable automations. And the best thing about it is that Google Sheets has API limits. 
right a very honest review on that it has api elements i've built workflows where i need you to call the database again and again need to store some information so google sheets have some permanent api elements but here table has nothing as such uh, you can complete the workflows within minutes whereas in google sheets you'll have to probably put in like a wait node for 30 seconds one minute or something and then only you'll be able to do it if you don't know about your table go take up a course go take up some beginner videos go start working on your table start exploring it you would love this so yeah, that was it about uh, module line. Thank you so much for joining in and looking forward to see you in the next video. Ciao.